You know, we were just hoping to get 100 extraordinary women, and I think right now we have 104, 150. Wow. Wow, good evening, everyone. You know, it struck me with all of the different roles and tasks that an evening like this has, that when it comes to giving the celebratory toast, that I won the lottery. And seriously, if there's one job to give me for the night, this is it. This is kind of my thing. And so I'm just super thankful to be with you guys tonight. I think one thing I have, we did such a great job at thanking our sponsors, um, thanking the college. There's so many people to thank, and it's just so cool to know all of the background of what brought us to this night. But I do want to say, we wanted every single dollar that's been given for this project to go straight to the library. And as we were soliciting lots of businesses saying, please sponsor us, they're like, who are you guys? What are you doing? Like, Because this is really us introducing the project. And so on our Extraordinary Women Committee, we have an anonymous person, and I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to look at them, but um, <laughs> it's overwhelming that someone decided to personally commit it makes me emotional. <laughs> Sorry, their money so that we could enjoy tonight and still give every dollar to the library. And so I just want to thank you and like say, wow, like, ugh. yeah. And you know, they know who they are. And really, the story is that there are so many women that often, sometimes in the front, sometimes in the back, we've contributed in so many ways. And so, yeah, thank you. When I think of all the evenings that have come and gone in our lifetime, um, the events and the parties that we've had, this one feels really special. The library has always been a cornerstone of my life and especially my childhood. I grew up in the Chicagoland area and my parents depended really hard on the library. A unique thing about me is that I'm one of four, um, but we were all born at the exact same time. And so I'm a quadruplet. <laughs> and my parents really needed a place to go. Um, <laughs> They were desperate for the library. <laughs> and really, the library was always a place of safety, support, and learning for our family. It helped my mom stay connected to other families and other resources that truly made all of the difference. The library was and is a place that sparks my curiosity, expands my understanding, and dares me to dream. And really, it feels extra special that we get to be here tonight at Ripon College. Um, for the majority of my time living here in Ripon, 12 years, I had the immense joy of working for a campus ministry right here at Ripon College. And so this room has held many special moments for me, from attending amazing performances and speeches, speaking on the stage as a presenter or a panelist, and even giving a maid of honor speech right here for one of my former students' weddings. It's amazing to think of all that has happened on this campus since its founding in 1851, just imagine the people who dared to dream of having a college here just three years after Wisconsin became a state. I wonder if they ever imagined what the magnitude of their dreams could be over 170 years later. I love imagining the lives of the first four graduates of Ripon College who happened to all be women. I was only a month or so into my new role at the Chamber of Commerce here when I heard about the library renovation project. And I knew that one of my goals for the chamber and one of the goals for my life is to work for positive change in our community. I think that's one of your goals too. And so the joke for me was that I was doing everything I could to not commit to any extra projects or committees. Oops. <laughs> All it took was a short presentation by Linda DeKramer, one of our amazing librarians, to get me hooked. And you can imagine my surprise when just a few months later, the Chamber of Commerce was invited to move into the Carnegie Building, built in 1905 and until 1973, the home of the Ripon Public Library. Um, you better believe I have nerded out about the incredible women who passionately advocated and collaborated to bring that project to fruition. I almost fell out of my chair when I found out that our community right here in Ripon help the library move into its present location by forming a human chain and passing the books down Watson Street. <laughs> right? Talk, talk about the perfect example of what we can accomplish when we work together. For the last nine months, um, Ripon has been on my mind morning, noon, and night. And in case you didn't know, my estimation, Ripon is rocking it. 
There are so many exciting new people, projects, and possibilities. And in the midst of all that is happening and the endless committees that you could be part of, if you need one, just let me know, I'll sign you up. Um, we have gathered here today because something that really just resonates deeply within me, and I believe something that resonates deeply within us all. And so I hope by now you've had a chance to take a look on your tables and learn about some of the extraordinary women that we've highlighted. Um, in case you want to see it more, it's going to be at the library for the entire month of March, which is Women's History Month. As we started to plan this event, we couldn't help but wonder about the extraordinary women in Ripon's past and those who are impacting our community today. And we quickly ran into a very real problem. There's just way too many of them. <laughs> and so they're really not all here. There's many more. And it's, it's easy to misunderstand this concept, though, of what it means to be extraordinary. In fact, many of my friends, some of you right here right now, said, oh, Mandy, thanks for the invite, but I'm really not extraordinary. I'm just, like, normal. <laughs> but as I delved into the history of our community and I talked to the women in Ripon today, I found example after example of women breaking out of ordinary, everyday life, rolling up their sleeves, <laughs> and contributing to the world around them. Then and now, women in, who, in their own way, in their small corner of the planet, are making a difference. There are stories of women business owners, elected officials, police officers, physicists, suffragettes, and even the first woman in America to ever get her PhD in mathematics was born here in Ribbon, Wisconsin. From the parks and woods around us to the very names of our city streets, the impact continues on from generation to generation. All of us in the circles that we connect to and influence have and are making an amazing legacy of innovative, resilient, and generous movers and shakers. We get things done. And I am confident that all of us have had moments where we have found ourselves stepping out of our normal to do something well extraordinary. <laughs> and so we have an opportunity tonight to celebrate being part of something worthwhile. And as we continue to roll up our sleeves and invite others to be part of this project, it's amazing to think of all we can do together to impact the next round of movers and shakers. Maybe years from now, they'll be gathered in this very place, speaking of nights like tonight, and the women represented today. Wow. So in the coming days, you will see more about this exciting project and the impact it will have on Ripon. There are many ways to get involved, and we've brought some of our beautiful brochures back there on the table with us tonight in case you want more information. And you can help us in two simple but very powerful ways. The first is to speak up. Share about this night and what you've learned with those around you. Help, us catch, help others catch the vision of what we are striving so hard to accomplish together. We truly need your help. Second, this one's pretty simple, come hang out at the library. <laughs> come see this amazing place in action. Walk through it. Begin to visualize all that this renovation will bring. There's nothing like a quick visit to the library to really zap you with energy and remind you why you're all in for this project. When it comes to libraries, they are described in many different ways by authors, poets, historical figures, and celebrities. They say that they are cathedrals of the mind, hospitals of the soul, theme parks of the imagination. A library is an infinity under a roof. The library is like a candy store where everything is free. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> it's spaceship, a time machine, a torch to the world, a passport, a teacher, a friend. The Andrew Carnegie said, a library outranks any other one thing a community can do to benefit its people. It is a never failing spring in the desert. I have to say that one of my favorite descriptions for a library actually comes from a 1970 pamphlet titled, Why Ripon Needs a Library. You should see this thing. It has really old pictures, descriptions of the updates needed at the Carnegie Building, the lack of storage, <laughs> the hazards that jeopardize users. <laughs> and seriously, look at these copies. It's like pictures of my, old, of my office I go to right now. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> when it gets to the part about sharing the vision for all the library is and all it can be, it says that a library is a reflection of the community. I love that. I see our community reflected in the way our library is serving so many day in and day out. 
We all know that the library is so much more than books. That's why we're thinking outside the books. And this renovation will allow so many important people to be able to use this library far into the future. Not to mention it'll give me one more awesome stop on my already amazing tour of all that Ripon has to offer, whether you're just visiting for a day or you're looking for your forever home. Just imagine that future entryway that we're contributing to right now, the countless faces that will be reflected in the plaque as they read the list of all the names of those who have contributed. This night truly is special. This project is special. And I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you here and watching online. And I'm so thankful to experience another memento moment right here in Great Hall. And so, with that, hope you haven't had your drink yet, um, would you join me in raising your glasses? Here's to creating a beautiful reflection of our incredible community, to honoring our inspiring history and those who have gone before us, the extraordinary things we are doing today, and the bright future that lies ahead tomorrow. Cheers. Woo! I love the cheers sound. <laughs> and so with that, keep cheering. Yes, get it. <laughs> we can do this all night. No. Um, with that, we want to wish you a very good evening. We encourage you to eat some more dessert, to check that banner. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Thank, go call your mom. Thank your mom. Thank some extraordinary women in your life. Um, but we love you. You are amazing. Thanks for being extraordinary with us.